Hello and welcome to Halloween Eve uh, and a special video today. This is a Halloween collaboration uh, with the wonderful and talented watercolour artist Lois Davidson who I've been most fortunate enough to work with today um, to do a painting along the theme of crows. Uh, so you can see uh, Lois Davidson's painting is on the left. Uh, her painting is wonderful and atmospheric and you should definitely go and check out her process on her art channel. Um, it's called A Murder of Crows, uh, which I think you'll agree is the most wonderful title. Um, mine is on the right. Uh, this is the crow I am about to show you how to paint. Uh, and the title of this painting is The Harbinger. <laughs> nice and atmospheric. Uh, so please continue watching if you'd like to find out how to paint this beautiful crow. Please also go over to Lois Davidson's channel and uh, give her some love, give her some Halloween uh, appreciation and uh, watch her incredible painting uh, demonstration of this wonderful murder of crows. So to begin with, um, I've drawn out my crow. Um, I used a photograph as a reference that I found online on a free image site called um, Pixels, uh, which is um, a really great resource for artists. Um, they do uh, many different types of uh, pictures. It's not just birds and animals, so please go on there and use it as a reference uh, because it's all sort of free use images uh, without licensing. So it's uh, really a brilliant resource uh, for artists of all kind. <laughs> Uh, you can see here I'm starting with a vibrant yellow-orange outline uh, around this crow. I wanted to give him um, some atmosphere. <laughs> Sorry, excuse that crow in the background, very apposite. Um, this orange I created uh, using gamboge yellow and cadmium red, mixing them together in the palette uh, and then um, adding a little extra water to sort of loosen it down. You can see I am going over my pencil lines here um, quite a lot, but I'm not too concerned about that because ordinarily I would be worried with watercolour because it's very light, but the crow is going to be black, so his feathers uh, should cover over the, um, the, the spilled yellow there. What I'm mostly concerned about is getting a nice sort of loose drift of colour out of the outline of this crow, so it almost looks like he's... Uh, haloed with this lovely sort of spooky orangey Halloweeny glow. You can see I'm really just uh, not being too precious about where I put this orange. I'm just putting it on with the brush nice and loosely um, with plenty of extra water there you can see to sort of pull it out and then using a tissue to um, give a little texture and a little looseness and a little softness to this edge. And you can see here, I think I put on a little bit too much, so I'm just uh, trying to wipe that down a little bit. It's a lovely thing about watercolour is you can lift parts of it if you're quick. Now, I understand this does all look very messy. <laughs> trust me uh, and trust the process. Uh, it will work well. But having said that, I would not recommend this technique if you are doing uh, anything other than a darker coloured bird. For example, if you want to paint a seagull, which is white, then um, don't do this. <laughs> as you won't be able to lift that yellow up uh, and you're going to have a yellow stained seagull.
So you can see here I'm just going over what I've originally done with this lovely yellow orange colour and just um, making sure that I've uh, built up the colour to the level I want uh, as a background for this painting. This is a really easy technique to do uh, if you're a beginner especially. This is uh, really good fun uh, and gives um, a lovely atmosphere to uh, your paintings. There we are, a little close up here. I know it looked terribly messy and awful, but um, trust me, it's it's going to look a lot better. So, I'm beginning with the bird's eye. Everyone always says uh, in bird painting this is the most important part of the bird to get right. Um, because it gives them their character and their expression, their uh, lifelikeness, if that's a word. <laughs> I'm using a very fine brush, uh, this is a round brush, uh, triple zero size, uh, and ivory black I'm using. And trust me, you are going to see a lot of ivory black in this painting. The lovely simple round eye there with a little uh, sort of semicircle of white to give it directionality. Uh, to give the bird an expression there, so he's staring out towards the left of the painting. Um, I feel like I should add as well that um, I waited for my background to be completely dry before starting uh, on the bird. It's probably um, a good idea because uh, you know what watercolour is like, it tends to run. Uh, so if you don't want the black leaching into your uh, lovely pale yellow orange background, uh, then I definitely advise you leave that to dry totally uh, before you begin painting. Or if you are impatient like me, uh, you can always use a hairdryer to uh, speed up the process. So you can see I've just coming in and doing a little uh, tuft of feathers, uh, fine sort of feathers on his beak. Uh, again, just using black and my fine brush. I just wanted to uh, differentiate this part uh, from the rest of his bill. As you're going to see here, I'm going to be using a lot of the same colour, but with watercolour, um, with a different sort of placement of paint and lightness of paint, you can uh, really vary it and uh, show the disparate parts of the bird whilst uh, still making it all black, if that makes sense. Uh, you can see here I've switched to a larger brush to uh, fill in some of the uh, the black in the crow's head. Uh, this is where it doesn't matter too much about the fine detail, I just want to get uh, some colour in. So I'm using a larger brush to, uh, to do a, a, lot of, a lot of black at a time. You can see I put around the eye, I put the paint on a little lighter. And now I'm just going in with some extra black and uh, filling it in, but leaving a little bit. You can see around the eye I've left a bit that's slightly, it's not grey, but it's kind of a light black, but it gives that impression of 
uh, shape of the roundness of the bird's uh, skull and the eye socket there. Um, so this painting doesn't look uh, too flat and uh, lifeless and without uh, any sort of texture. And speaking of texture, <laughs> this was the, uh, the funnest part to do of this bird. I really wanted to make him look really uh, sort of um, raggedy and um, sort of bristly. Uh, so I'm using um, a fine brush uh, to just flick out those feathers along the top and uh, under his throat uh, like crows do when they're calling out. Um, I know this is something more normally associated with ravens, um, but we have a family of crows that lives near us, uh, a lovely pair that come to uh, take food regularly from where we put it. Uh, sometimes they sit outside the window and call very loudly um, and you can see all their throat feathers puff out and look uh, faintly ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but that's what I wanted to mimic in this painting. So you can see I'm just using uh, quick small strokes, small careful strokes uh, to just fill in the black uh, around the crow's head. I am being careful over the shape of his wing here on the back which you can see I have just penciled in carefully going over that because that uh, has obviously a um, different type of feathers uh, a directionality of feathers which I want to be careful to show um, through the application of paint. So I'm leaving that for now and just concentrating on uh, his head and his body. And you can see as well that I'm switching between um, my very fine brush and my larger brush, um, larger brush to uh, fill in the um, fill in the colour, and then a smaller brush for details, but in these lovely little directional flicks um, to give those lovely um, raggedy feather effects. As you can see here, I filled in the rest of the body, his little chubby belly there, uh, using exactly the same techniques as um, I showed you just now, uh, filling in the main part of the bird and then doing little flicks with the fine brush to give the impression of these lovely ragged feathers. So now that's taken care of, I've switched to a uh, flat brush uh, and this is to put in uh, these feathers on the wing here. Uh, that have this uh, lovely directionality to them. Um, so I'm going to be using the, uh, the shape of the flat brush when you fill it with uh, paint and then press it down quite firmly onto the paper. It will leave an impression of its shape, sort of a little flat dome, um, as you can see. Um, sometimes this is something we want to avoid with the brush, leaving obvious brush marks, but here they are, uh, they are very welcome. <laughs>
So you see here, I filled in the rest of the wing uh, with my black and now I'm putting in, uh, this is Prussian blue, uh, but you can use any colour you like, sort of blue or possibly a purple colour, uh, I would also suggest. And this is uh, to demonstrate the beautiful uh, sort of almost oil slick sheen you get on uh, some black birds' feathers, particularly uh, corvid family, sort of crows and magpies. Um, they have this beautiful iridescence to their feathers. Crows, you don't see it so much. You mostly just see it on the wing when it's folded. Uh, so that's what I'm showing here. You can see that I've put down some black already, but I've put it down quite loosely and quite lightly. And now I'm using my flat brush uh, with the blue, uh, just going to echo the movement of feathers, that lovely shape there, and just doing these uh, nice sort of swift strokes to... Uh, allow the paint to sort of flood in there but to also retain its, uh, the sense of directionality uh, and the sense of those uh, wing feathers being swept back um, across the crow's back. You can see I'm also again using this the flat of the flat brush, <laughs> if that makes sense, the, the flat part, um, to just dab in some blue across the, uh, the wing shoulder here where there are these smaller feathers rather than the pin feathers. Uh, and uh, that's to get that lovely impression of that that sort of peacock blue sheen as well. Of course, you don't have to use uh, Prussian blue, uh, which is what I used. You can use whatever blue you have, or I think um, I said before a purple, I believe, would also work really well here. So there's lovely sort of blue plummy sort of colours that you see on the crow. Um, I decided on blue here because um, I thought it would complement the orange that I've used uh, in the background. And you can see here I'm just adding a little bit of extra uh, fine detail, fine texture. Now I've put in the main bolt uh, of the bird. I'm just going over where I've put in uh, his wingtip and his uh, tail where it's fanned down just there in the corner. Uh, and I'm just raddling that up with my fine brush uh, and some black paint and really making him look uh, like he's been very, very ruffled. So this is a ruffled crow here. Lovely and spooky and seasonal. There we go, letting some of that dry and then getting impatient uh, and putting in his little foot. Uh, crows are very much black on black, so uh, their legs are black as well uh, and their talons are black as well. <laughs> so what are we using? All together now, yes, I am using ivory black here and my fine brush, um, but I've also watered down the black a little. So we initially have uh, this lovely uh, grey colour which you can see then I am using a stronger pigment going over and just putting in some detail and putting in uh, some lines to show uh, the shadow and the shape uh, of the bird's leg.
and there we are there is the crow finished so I'm just giving him uh, his little stand here I've decided to perch him uh, on a rock or a piece of wood whatever your imagination deems this to be um, I just wanted to give him um, a nice uh, simple perch I didn't want to put in any sort of uh, uh, any background detail that was going to take away from his uh, his glorious majestic spookiness uh, so just using uh, this is burnt umber here that I'm using uh, to just throw in um, a quick uh, perch for this crow friend uh, you can see I'm really just um, chucking the paint in with my uh, larger brush I think this is a um, I think this is size one out of my brush pack if you uh, have similar um, and using my tissue there to just go in, pull a bit of paint out and uh, put a bit of texture in. You can see I'm leaving a little white space um, around the crow's talons around his feet because um, I don't want that to get overwhelmed with the brown colour because obviously that's paler than the actual bird there's a bit of grey in there so you can see I'm leaving a little space um, just to uh, just to allow that to uh, to show off a little And you can see here, I'm just finishing this off. I uh, pulled a lot of the texture out with uh, some tissue. Now I'm going in with my fine brush that is a mixture of quite loose uh, burnt umber and black that I'm just popping in there and letting sort of drift down the page, uh, adding even more texture. And there we are. There is the crow in all his majesty on his little brown perch. Uh, you can see that lovely eye there. Uh, he's clearly staring into the distance and pawing at something we can't see at the moon perhaps this is Halloween after all or rather nearly it's Halloween Eve here in the UK so uh, wherever you are and uh, whatever you're doing to celebrate um, I hope you all have a wonderful spooktastic Halloween don't forget please to go and check out Lois Davidson's art channel show her a bit of spooky love uh, and enjoy her painting of her beautiful watercolour uh, murder of crows um, I have to say thank you again to Lois Davidson uh, for doing this collaboration with me it's been a really wonderful experience and I hope that you guys have enjoyed uh, the experience of uh, watching this lovely spooky crow friend uh, come to life um, so thank you again for watching I hope you all have a wonderful Halloween uh, and I'll see you the next time goodbye <laughs>